this rainy day. I know that people are still coming in and making it in from that, that great weather out there. If you're new with us here today, we want to invite you to check out our app. It's a free app. You can download that at either the uh, Apple uh, Store or Google Play. It's free, and you can check out all the events and things coming up there. Uh, one of the events I really want to push this morning is the Pizza with the Pastor. That's an opportunity for newer folks to connect with us. So if you've only been attending the last month or two and uh, you'd like to learn more about the church, uh, who we are and our mission, and even learn more about me, I would like the opportunity to connect with you as you learn more about me as well. I think that's uh, very powerful to learn about the people here at Salt and Cloud. And so please bring your family. It would be a wonderful time together. Uh, last week, we started a new beginning here. It was our first Sunday, and if you couldn't be here with us, don't worry, you didn't miss out, because each and every week, our aim is that we're going to get better and better at what we're doing here at Forks Community Church. I'm really excited about the brighter future that God has in store for us, and one of the reasons I'm really excited about the brighter future that God has for us is that our men's ministry has been up and running, and yesterday we had 14 guys out at the Hartzels. We had a great breakfast provided by Faye, and we had a wonderful discussion about uh, what it means for men to be salt and light in their places of work. So that was a really great time. I'm also excited because of, of Andy being here with us, Andy and Jody joining us in the last month, and Andy's going to be our youth director. So here it is. Here's the video. Let's go ahead. You can do it now. <laughs> Turn it up, please. The first meeting of the night crew. That's what we're calling our youth group. It's from 6 to 8 o'clock right here, and everyone's welcome. It's open house format, and we're going to be learning how I can prove the authenticity and reliability of this book with this. Hope we see you tonight, 6 to 8. Please bring a covered dessert, and please remember to mask. See you then. So, um, Good morning, church. Andy, that was honeycomb, right? Okay, yeah, I thought so. So that's interesting. Uh, okay, how he's going to prove the authenticity and reliability of Scripture from honeycomb, which is a great cereal, by the way, one of my favorites. Well, this morning we're here to worship, and I wanted to read one verse from Psalm 103. We're going to be finishing out the service with uh, a song talking about blessing the Lord, but we also want to start the service with this idea. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Let's stand. I'm going to open in prayer and ask God's blessing upon our service as we respond to him in worship this morning. So let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to worship you this morning. I pray, Lord, that we would bless your holy name as we sing songs of praise to you, as we pray as we give tithes and offerings, and as we receive from your word this morning. Equip us, Lord, to be the people who follow Jesus into the world and continue his mission to reach people who are far from God. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of musicians, and thank you that Matt and Jenny can, can be here this morning as they lead us in worship. We pray that for your blessing upon our search for a worship leader, and thank you that Matt and Jenny can, can fill that role for us this morning. And, Lord, we pray that you would pro provide direction to our search, that you would lead us to the right person for that role here to help engage our people in corporate worship of your name. We pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. All right, good morning, everyone. Jesus. 
Thank you. You may be seated. All right, thank you, Matt and Jenny, for leading us in that time of worship. We're going to transition to a time of, of prayer, and this morning, instead of just having you kind of listening to me as I pray, I'm going to lead us in a time of uh, guided prayer, and I kind of got this idea from a, an app I've been using called Pause, and uh, what this app does is you can have like a one-minute, three-minute, or a five-minute pause, and there's a guy on there with soothing music, and he just prays, and it's a time for us to like connect with God in prayer. So just follow my prompts as we pray together this morning. And may I just simply add, if you do have a prayer request that you want to keep confidential or you would like shared with the congregation, you can either email me or you can use our church app. On the bottom of that home screen, there is a connect tab. And if you press that connect tab, there is a link to uh, many different forms. And one of those is I have a prayer request. So I'm the only person who receives those prayer requests, so if you have a prayer request, please submit those to me. So let's pray together. Search me, O God, and know my anxious thoughts. We come to you, Lord Jesus, for peace of mind. We give our mind to you. We set our minds upon you. Capture our every thought. We surrender all of our worry and speculation to you. We surrender everything grabbing our attention. So let's take this moment now to give those worries and burdens to the Lord. give you our thoughts, Lord Jesus, all of our mind, our focus, our attention, our memory and recall, all of our understanding and imagination. We dedicate the life of our mind to you, Lord Jesus, and to you alone. We are told that the mind governed by God's spirit is life and peace. We pray, Holy Spirit of God, to fill our mind. Fill our thoughts with who you are and with your truth. Fill our minds and hearts with your life and peace. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been given the mind of Christ. And so we ask that you renew our minds. We ask that you renew our hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. And we remember the words of Philippians 4.8, that exhortation to us to fix our minds on what is true and honorable, right and pure, lovely and admirable. That we think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of all of our praise. You created us. You redeemed us by your Son, and you indwell your people by your Holy Spirit. We pray that Christ would be magnified in our midst. May our hearts be encouraged and strengthened. And we ask, Lord God, that your mighty breath might blow through us and cause Forks Community Church to soar for the glory of Christ and for our good and for the good of those who do not yet know you. May you use this forthcoming message to challenge, equip, to equip us by your Holy Spirit to follow Jesus into the world, to be a blessing to those who are far from you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, this morning, I want to begin uh, with a corporate slogan or tagline, and I'm trusting that that you're going to know these slogans. So when I mention them, you're going to tell me, you know, what company or, you know, organization these taglines belong to. So for example, if I said, melts in your mouth, not in your hand, 
M&Ms. All right, good. We're off to a good start. How about this? The quicker picker-upper. Bounty. All right, and that's all the ladies said that. The guys didn't know that. Um, uh, this one is, is all me. American runs on? Duncan, yes. Now, here's one that's been around for a while. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's... Oh, Tom knew that. So MasterCard. So we know who's the spender in our midst, right? <laughs> uh, this one's a little bit more local. So if you belong to the Lehigh Valley, you probably know this. Your life, your world, your news. Yeah, WFMZ Channel 69, yes. So, you know, these taglines, they all have a way of, of sticking in our heads and they're enduring it. And maybe the most well-known tagline is this, just do it. Yeah, Nike. That's obvious. Now, this is going to be a little test and I might be embarrassed by this, but did you realize that here at FCC we have a slogan too? All right, so my admin, Faye Hartzell, knows that. Does anyone else know that we have a slogan here at, at FCC? Okay, what is the slogan? Yeah, there it is. All right, good, good, good. All right, I don't feel like a failure this morning. Yeah, real hope for real people. Now, that slogan ties in nicely uh, to our purpose as a church to lead people to love and live for Jesus right where they are. That's great commission stuff that Jesus has commanded us. But, you know, there, there's one thing interesting about slogans. There's one thing to know it and another to do it. So, for example, Nike, just do it. You know, a lot of people like to wear the Nike clothing, but they're not really exercising, right? It's fashionable to wear, but they might look good, but never go to the gym, never work out, never lift weights, never go on a walk. And I think the same thing could even be true for our slogan and the mission of Jesus is that it's one thing to know the mission. It's another thing to do it. And, you know, here at FCC, our vision is that we want to be a church that measures maturity not just by what we know, not just knowing the scripture, but by acting on the scripture, by doing it, by following Jesus' mission. And so we want to become those followers who just don't know what the Great Commission is, but we want to be people who are living that out in our everyday lives. You know, Jesus just doesn't want us to come here one hour on a Sunday morning then go, all done, you can go home now. No, we, we want to be a church where, you know, Jesus is part of our everyday lives, where you know, we're kind of bringing everyday church into our everyday lives. You know, as Christians, we've been given every spiritual blessing in Christ. That's what how Ephesians chapter 1 opens, that as followers of Jesus, we've been given every spiritual blessing from heaven. And because of that, we have a great privilege. And that great privilege is kind of our big idea here this morning. And, and here's our big idea for today's message, that in Jesus... We are blessed to be a blessing to those who are far from God. In Jesus, we are blessed to be a blessing to those who are far from God. That's our mission. That's God's mission. It's why he sent Jesus. Now, some people think that God's mission only began when Jesus, when God sent Jesus into the world and when Jesus said, go and make disciples. But God's mission began all the way back in the very beginning, in Genesis. From the very beginning, from Genesis chapter 3, God has been on a mission. He's been on a mission to redeem humanity. And, and God's mission began with one man in Genesis chapter 12. And he sent Abraham on a mission. And here's what God said to him in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. 
Now, did you notice there's one word that's repeated again and again in those three verses? What is it? Yeah, bless or blessing or blessed. Five times in just three short verses. God says to Abraham, I'm going to bless you. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And, And not only that, but that all people on earth will be blessed through you, Abraham. Now, the interesting thing is when God gives this promise to Abraham, his future is very much in doubt. God promised him uh, descendants through through Sarah, his wife. And as he's hearing this, I can imagine him turning to Sarah going, oh, my goodness, you are so old. How in the world are you going to bear children? And she might be thinking the same thing about Abraham. You know, you are so old. How in the world are we going to make this work? You might say that the mission of human beings had come to a screeching halt, which interestingly enough is the place where the mission of God can finally take off. When when we think things might be lost is when God says, hey, I got a bright future for you. I think it's kind of very timely for us, as I mentioned last week in the message that You know, we had reached a point last summer, I had reached a point where I thought I was done, I thought the church was done, I thought we're not going anywhere, you know, maybe I just need to step back and let someone else come in here and take over, but but through that, I think God reminded me that I'm not done with you yet, Tim, and I'm not done with FCC yet. And I have a hope that he has a bright future for us. But sometimes in that moment of desperation is when God can cause things to thrive and to flourish. And so God says to Abraham to go, to go. And that's the same mission that Jesus has given us, to go. We have to go. It's not enough just to, to know, right, to know the mission. We have to go. We have to go on mission. And that, that's wherever we are. You know, it doesn't mean that this morning we have to go to Mexico or we have to, to go to Africa to be on mission with Jesus. We can be on mission with Jesus wherever we are as we go through life. And so Abraham here was blessed to be a blessing. And I think what can happen to us sometimes as believers is we just want to be filled up with those blessings. We just want to be filled up. But we forget that God has blessed us to be a blessing. I love this verse in Psalm 67, 1 to 2. May God be gracious to us and bless us. May he make his face shine upon us. Now, as Americans, we just want to stop there. Bless us, God. Help me, you know, bless me with the American dream. But look at verse 2. Why are we asking God to bless us? so that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Bless me, Lord, so I can be a blessing to others. So we are blessed to be a blessing. So God's plan from the beginning was to bless a people and through that people to bless others who are far from God. And it began with Abraham, and of course, it carries over to Jesus. He's the one through whom that blessing comes to all the world, Jew and Gentile alike. And notice how blessing was incorporated in Jesus' ministry from the very beginning. Jesus' first sermon, Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, begins with with what is known as the Beatitudes. And he describes nine ways you can live a blessed life. So let's go to that that, uh, slide there with, with those Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5. You can turn there if you have that, your Bible in front of you. I mean, just look how this begins. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. And it goes on and on. Jesus is talking about how we can live the blessed life. People also brought children to Jesus so that he would bless them. And so from heaven to earth, there wasn't a single breath, not a single blink of Jesus' eyes, not a single moment in his life when he wasn't sent by God to bless people and places that he came across. Now, there's one little story we want to look at here this morning where Jesus blessed 
a man that everyone in his society had written off. We thought, this guy is scum of the earth. There is no way this man could ever be blessed by God. And his name was Zacchaeus. So let, let's look at his story here in Luke 19, 1 to 4. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and he was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Now let me just stop there and give you a little bit of background about tax collectors in Jesus' day. Tax collectors in Jesus' day were viewed as the enemy because most of them were Jewish, Jewish men who were employed by Rome, the enemy, to collect taxes from God's people. So they were viewed as the, the traitors, right? They collaborated with Rome, turning their backs on God's people. So that's a little bit of background about Zacchaeus here. And Zacchaeus wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, I get that, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Now, what I want to draw your attention to is that Jesus was just passing through. He didn't have written his divine day planner, visit Zacchaeus on my way. No, he's just passing through. And he notices Zacchaeus. This guy's climbing the tree to see Jesus. And yet Jesus, out of all the people around him, chose to spend time with Zacchaeus, this guy who was who was far from God, who ripped people off. That's how tax collectors got wealthy. They charged more than they should, and they lined their pockets. I just started watching uh, The Chosen. Are you familiar with The Chosen? It's this um, uh, series that's been on uh, YouTube, and it's about the life of Jesus. And they really do a good job with Matthew, who was a tax collector, showing that how he was treated by his own people. I mean, he really got treated like scum of the earth. Like people wouldn't look at him. He was, as he walked through town, he, you know, he's just walking down because he doesn't want to meet anyone's eyes because he's ashamed of what he's done. But at the same time, he's become very wealthy through this job. So you can imagine here that Jesus is coming through and he, he sees Zacchaeus. And out of everyone there, Jesus says, Zacchaeus, I'm going to dine with you tonight. I'm going to eat with you tonight. And now that's a big deal because when you're eating with someone, it signifies that you're having fellowship with them, that, you know, they're your buddies and, and you're on the same team. And in the midst of that conversation, Jesus had blessed Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus promised to give away almost everything he owned. He realized, wow, what I've been doing is wrong and I need to pay back. I need to... to Give these things back to these people. And notice what Jesus says in Luke 19, 9 and 10. Today, salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. He's blessed, just like Abraham. And then Jesus says this, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. What I want you to notice is Jesus blesses Zacchaeus immediately. He doesn't say, Tomorrow, salvation will come to this house, house once Zacchaeus gets his act together. He doesn't say, you know, when this check clears Zacchaeus of all this money, then salvation will come to you. No, he says salvation has come to your house today. I want you to think about the magnitude of that blessing. That was probably a jaw-dropping moment for everyone around Jesus and around Zacchaeus. Here's a guy who is despised by his own people, and Jesus comes to him and says, you are blessed. You are a son of Abraham. And that's just one little snapshot of the type of people Jesus encountered and blessed. And that's what we are called to do as followers of Jesus. If you're a follower of Jesus here today, you are blessed to be a blessing to those who are far from God. We're not just simply blessed to huddle together in Bible studies as great as they are. We had our men's group yesterday. That was a great time of encouragement. But that's not all we are supposed to do. Yes, we gather together, but then we're supposed to scatter. We're to scatter out into the world because we're blessed to be a blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. And it's interesting 
in the book of Galatians, Paul draws a straight line from Abraham to Jesus to us. And here's what he says. Understand then that those who have faith, meaning those who have chosen to follow Jesus, are children of Abraham as well. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham that all nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So that same promise of blessing to Abraham applies to us as followers of Jesus. We too are blessed. We too, like Abraham, are blessed to be a blessing. But here's the trap I think we run into sometimes as Christians. Sometimes we think that blessing is like this bucket. Sometimes we believe that we're like this bucket, that we're just here to be filled up by all of God's wonderful blessings. But we're not. So you guys are pretty good. You caught on to that. (laughs) So yes, God does fill us up with his blessings. But we're not just here to be filled up. Those blessings are to flow through us. What happens if you just fill up this bucket at home and you let it sit around? It's going to get green and nasty, right? But if that water flows through us, right, it's constantly flowing. Like Jesus said, like rivers of living water flowing through us. So, guys, we don't want to just be a bucket. Our desire isn't just, Lord, fill me up. No, we want God to fill us up, but we also want that blessing to flow through us to other people. And that's why it's important, that's why we're doing this series, How to Bless Your Neighbor. To help us bring us back to Jesus' mission to realize that in Jesus we are blessed to be a blessing. You know, here at Forks Community Church, we're not just gathering together uh, just to have good old times, but we're here on a mission to follow Jesus into the world. And so if we're going to help people find their way back to God, it's not just a matter of saying, hey, come here, come to church. And I don't want you to discourage to inviting people to be here. But more often than not, the people that are going to be here are going to be the people that you have gone out to, right? The people that you have gone out to, the people that you have associations with. Those are the people that God's blessings are going to flow through you to them. The Apostle Paul puts it this way. When anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. All of this is from God. He brought us back to himself through Jesus' death on the cross, and he has given us, look, he has given us the task of bringing others back to him through Christ. God was bringing the world back to himself through Christ. He did not hold people's sins against them. And here it is again, this privilege. God has trusted us with the message that people may be brought back to him. So God has given us this great privilege. Yes, we have been saved by God through faith in Christ, but he has given us the privilege to be a blessing to others. And that blessing is to be able to go out and tell people, you can have a fresh start. You can find your way back to God. It's a message that's straight from heaven. It's a divine blessing that should flow through us to others. So I want you to think about yourself for a moment. If you're a a Christian here today, you are a Christian because someone made the decision that they weren't just going to be like this bucket, but that they were going to be like this hose. They were going to let God's blessing, blessing flow through them to you. And aren't you glad that that person said, hey, I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to follow Jesus. Now, for me, that was my parents. I became a Christian through my parents' influence, through taking me to church and doing devotions at home. And I remember I was five years old when I made that decision, I'm going to follow Jesus. But I was blessed because they made that decision that they're going to be a blessing to others. 
And so at some point, you, like Zacchaeus, became a child of God by putting faith in the Lord Jesus. And now it's your turn. You get to play the role of Jesus with Zacchaeus. Because in Jesus, you are blessed to be a blessing. So I don't want you to be like this bucket here. I want you to be like this channel, this hose, where God's blessing is going to flow through you to others. So your challenge for this week, as we always end with a challenge here, your challenge this week is to map out your mission field. Map out your mission field. So I want you to think about where you live, your neighborhood, where you work, where you shop, where you gather. Think about all the places where you have interaction with others, where your life intersects with other people on a regular basis. And guess what? That's your mission field. That is your mission field. That is the place where God has put you to reach others. That is where he wants you to be a blessing to others. You know, it's one thing to to know the mission. It's another thing to lead people to Jesus. And so the rest of this series, we're going to be equipping you with five practices, five blessed practices to help you be a blessing to those people who are far from God. You know, it's one thing I've learned over the years as a leader, as a pastor, is that hope is not a strategy. Do you know what I mean by that? Hope is not a strategy. We can say, Man, I hope people come to church today. Okay, well, we can pray, and we certainly want to pray, but are we going out to do things? Like, what are we doing to reach those people? Hope isn't a strategy. It's not enough to know the mission. We have to do the mission. So here are the the five blessed practices, just a very quick overview, and then next week we're going to begin with the first one, which is prayer. The B is for begin with prayer. We believe that through prayer is how you discover your mission, as well as how you go about it. And so even as this week, as you're kind of figuring out, Lord, where's my mission field? You, you just start praying and asking God for guidance. So we're going to dive deeper into that next week, begin with prayer. And then the, the L is to listen. You know, sadly, um, most Christians are not good at this. <laughs> we want to just... Talk, talk, talk. And granted, we have a lot of good things to share. But we need to learn to listen. And so we're going to equip you to be good listeners. And then this, uh, the E is the one that we all probably like, eat. Who doesn't like to eat? Yeah, that's what I thought. I know the men like to eat, man. They chowed down on those burritos yesterday. But, you know, eating is something that's very easy to do, and it was very instrumental in the mission of Jesus. So we're going to see how... Eating and the mission of Jesus are intricately linked. And then the first S is serve. Serve. As you get to engage those around you in your sphere of influence, you're going to discover ways where you can serve them. And then through serving them, you will have the opportunity for the second S, is to, to share the story of Jesus, to share how Jesus changed your life and share how they can come to know Jesus as well. So we're going to have a lot more to to share about this. And guys, I want you to know that I didn't come up with this blessed practice. I've tried many other ways to try to engage people far from God, Jesus. But this is the one set of practices that has really become near and dear to my heart. I've tried to memorize all the monologues, all the canned approaches, but I really think this way is the way of Jesus. It's the way he did it. It's the way that's going to gain traction in our culture. It might take more time, but I think as all of us buy into this here at FCC, I really believe that we're going to see great blessing in the days ahead. Because if we're going to be a church to lead people to love and live for Jesus right where they are, we need to be engaging in the blessed practices. So think back to Zacchaeus for a moment. 
Here's a guy who was far from God. He was living a life of greed on the backs of people around him. He's despised and alone. You know, as we look around Forks Township today, there's a lot of wealthy homes. On the outside, there's a high quality of life. You know, I'm going to quote Cobra Kai for a moment. Johnny Lawrence grew up really nice suburbs in California. And someone said, oh, you grew up there? That's really nice. And he says this. Just because the homes are nice on the outside doesn't mean nice things are going on inside. And when Tori and I saw that, we looked at each other, we're like, that's suburbia. That's suburbia. There's not a lot of nice things going on inside some of the homes here in Forks Township. And that's why we're here. We want to reach those people like Zacchaeus, who from the outside, it looks like they have it all. But on the inside, they're longing to see a know Jesus. So let's give them that glimpse. Let's go and be a blessing to them. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you that in you we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing from above. Lord, we cannot possibly comprehend the heights and the depths of the love of Christ for us. Lord, help us. If there's anything else that we have not learned today, I just pray the one thing that we have gained here this morning is that we're not here to hoard these spiritual blessings. But Lord, because we are known by you, we are, hel- we are here to help others know Jesus. So Lord, I really pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you impress these truths upon our hearts that we would realize in Jesus Christ we are blessed to be a blessing. That we would not just know that, but that we would do it. That we would follow you, Jesus, into the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and sing 10,000 Reasons. Worship is
Jesus commissioned his followers to carry on his mission into the world, he also promised his presence with them. So remember, as you go forth, the presence of Jesus is with you always. Go and be a blessing to others. You are dismissed.